We're here at the Lucas Oil's off-road racing series in Phoenix, Arizona. Check this action out. Yes! Jeremy McGrath, Supercross legend. Apache Trail. Oh, it's sounds be great. Epic. For this adventure, I would head back to the USA and to Phoenix in Arizona, where I would head straight for the dealership and pick up the awesome Triumph Tiger 800. The plan for my weekend in the sun will be to first go and check out an event I've heard loads about, and then meet up with a friend and go and ride an historic desert trail. My first stop will be an off-road car racing series that has a reputation for intense door-to-door -door battles and high-flying action. Plus, I get a chance to hang out with a Rockstar Energy racing team. Oh yes, I can't wait to see these machines fly. We're here at the Lucas Oil's off-road racing series in Phoenix, Arizona. Check this action out! action was non-stop and it was great to see so many different classes, cars of all sizes and drivers of all ages. No matter what the category though, the races were super close and the racing was rapid. The whole atmosphere was electric, the fans were having a great time and I even spotted a Petrolhead TV celebrity amongst the crowd. During the lunch break and while the track got prepared for the afternoon, I then headed back through to the vendor area and then onto the pits, as I wanted to catch up with some of these drivers and see these cars close up. So Ryan, we're here at the Lucas Oils Racing Series. You're in the pro line, it's pretty amazing, but you used to be a motorbike rider. So tell me what that transition is like. Yeah, so what we've done is basically I went from racing motocross and whatnot, and then, you know, the truck thing opened up and became available for me to learn to race trucks, basically. So, um, <clears throat> got the chance, got in it, did really well right off the bat, um, and have kind of just stuck with it now. We're, we're on, going on six years now and wow. had a lot of fun doing it. It's just like riding a dirt bike. I mean, really? this is a dirt bike with four wheels and a cage around you, so basically, is all it is. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of fun. Same jumping, cornering aspect. Um, you know, setting up passes and, and picking lines, same yeah. thing as Supercross and yeah. Motocross, so um, it, it kind of just naturally fit. Yeah, 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 brilliant. I can't believe how much these guys get in the air. These things are airborne <laughs> all the time, aren't they? They're like a real robust truck. Yeah, no, so we uh, we run some big, crazy shocks on these things, you know, we run a Bilstein coil over and bypass on them, so that's what cushions and, and catches these jumps. You know, these trucks are 3,400 pounds and we're falling 30, 40 feet out of the air. Um, so they do a great job at catching the landings. And what kind of horsepower are we talking in there? Uh, we're talking a 500 horsepower Chevrolet engine, so yep, they do well. I'm not big into cars, but coming <laughs> here, it's almost yeah. like, you know, it's really exciting. The racing's close. Yeah, yeah, the racing's very close. like a real grassroots um, championship. I know it's a it national is. series. Yep. I was really impressed seeing the kids on track today in the same oh. series as the adults. I'm so what they have is they have what they call the trophy carts, which is a 450 dirt bike, you know. Yeah. 450 dirt bike engine and basically a downscaled size truck of this, you know, yeah. um, you know, they, they rip, you know, and that, so that's where the kids learn it, you know, they, yeah. they come from that and they come over and race with us, you know, and they, they always do really good right away, so 
it's a great grassroots sport, like you said. Yeah. Um, and it's a blast, you know, it's a family thing. Everybody camps at the track and has a good time. Yeah, yeah, really. Thank you for no. showing us around Anytime. and being a part of your team. I thank mean, you for coming out. Crazy <laughs> couple days. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Well, good luck. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate Thanks, it. Buddy. After my chat with Ryan, I then went back to the track to see these young kids really going for it. Wow, look at these kids fly. Now, buddy. Uh, 14. How old are you now? Nine. Nine years old. In the next class, the kids were a bit older and faster. Man, these cars really ripped around the track. And with this being the final round and with the championship on the line, it was a winner takes all for that number one plate. Huge thanks to uh, Luke Coyle for putting on this amazing event. As these cars get such abuse, the pit crew work frantically between the races to prep the car, changing whatever is needed, all for that next round of punishment. During my pit walk, I came across a very brave driver who, despite being paralysed, wanted to race. So together with his friend, they had come up with a very clever way of him to have all of his controls close to hand. He was going to show us a few hand controls, so amazing. Right here, yeah, he's yeah. at the tri-pin, put the brake, and then there's a mechanism over there that transfers between gas and brake. It's only when you get close to these cars you really start to see how special these machines are. Even the tyres are cut to spec on site. In the ultra fast Pro 2 class and leading the championship was an absolute motorcycle legend. The king of Supercross. So I had to go chat with him about his transition to cars and his love for bikes. So we're here at the Lucas Oils Off-Road Championship. There's lots of motorcyclists here doing this, but there's no one here better than the good Jeremy McGrath, Supercross legend. What made you come to Fall Wheels? Obviously, I'd like to race my dirt bike forever, but it's a little hard to do when you get older and you, yeah. you get a family and you get kids and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, you know, for me, this is like the next next best thing. It's, okay. it's kind of like Supercross in a truck, and uh, so it just made sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And is there, is there any similarities that are the same? I mean, it looks kind of similar. I mean, you're going over jumps. Yeah, and... I wouldn't say it's, uh, you know, the racing aspect's very similar, yeah. but the driving part is, is totally different. I mean, you're riding, when you're riding, you can lean, and yeah. here, when here, you're sliding, and so there's a lot of things that are different. It's, um, you know, it takes a long time to learn how to drive. Like, I didn't grow up racing cars or doing anything like that. Um, so it takes a long time to, yeah. you know, I can get to the 90 percentile driving, but it took a long time to get to the 100 percentile okay. where I can win races and feel yeah. like I can win every time I'm here. So, uh, you know, it was kind of one of those things that, uh, you know, it, it took a long time. And, and there's a lot more pieces, it seems like, to putting the puzzle together when you're here at the uh, truck races. Yeah, yeah. And do you find that with the motorcycle, you were able to make up a lot of, let's say, advantages that you got was down to yourself, your own right. talent, your own technique. I think that's true. I think it definitely is true. Uh, in, in auto racing and, and most of all auto racing, you're only really as good as your vehicle is. Okay. You know, and you can change lines and do all that, but it, uh, you can't, I mean, the, mo the more you push, typically the slower you go. Okay. So you have to have, really have a, a good working car or truck or whatever it is. But um, in moto, you can kind of ride a different line. You can your style can be better than another guy's. Yeah. You can, your technique can be better. Yeah. So there's a lot of things you can you can pull out of the hat to try and make make some advantage on other guys. But here, it's not so much. Wow. You're, you're you're seat belted in, and you yeah. have you know your gas and brake pedal, and you're only as good as your setup. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the feeling of winning still the, winning still the same? Yeah, that feeling of winning never gets old. You know, it's uh, in some ways it's a little bit more. At times, it's a little more exciting in this because it's been more. It feels like it's been more difficult for me to get to the victory circle. But okay. um, now we, we're getting there pretty consistently now. Yeah. Um, and this year, you know, obviously we're gonna we're gonna 
win the championship, so that's pretty cool. Wonderful. Uh, it's, it's been like 10 years in the making, really. Wow. It's just been really hard to get to the top, and uh, you know that that part feels pretty cool. You know, I mean, for the challenge I set up for myself was to try and come out here, and and I tried to keep it a hobby for a long time. You know, just keep it real casual, but. The racer inside me got the best of me, and I, I had to go out and get my own team and my own stuff. And wow! And then you know now it's 10 years later, and we're finally going to get a championship. So uh, it's pretty cool. That's really Wonderful. cool. Wonderful. So your number two, that kind of quite legendary, comes with you as well. So are you going to change that when you win the championship? Uh, I think the right thing to do is when you win a championship, you you run the number one. Yeah. That's the right thing to do. Yeah, so yeah, it'll be number one next year. So you still love bikes? You still involved with bikes, even though you're involved with cars? Yeah. I mean, I'm still very active in the moto industry. I mean, yeah. in fact, this, that's what I mostly do. What's really cool as in, for me lately is, you know, Kawasaki has an amateur program, Team Green, so I get yeah. to work with the kids. Yeah, brilliant. You know, give some mentoring, yeah. work with the parents a yeah. little bit. Yeah. That's what it all is, is you know, helping the kids because they are the next Jeremy McGrath. Right, I mean, they're, they're trying to be the next Jeremy McGrath, yeah, so yeah. if I can help them or whatever, um, you know, that, that part's been really fun for me. Great. Um, you know, when you're working with pros and stuff, you can't really tell the pros much because they know everything, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of them aren't really willing to talk about, you know, someone with some more experience or something because they're younger and they're just, you know, they, they kind of know everything. So. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, it's been really fun working with the kids, and that's why the Kawasaki thing made sense. Yeah. Um, Honda and those other teams are just not doing that stuff, so um, just figured I'd bring it full circle and bring it back to the roots. Good. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, it's been a great interview, amazing talking to this man, an absolute legend. Watch him, he's going to be number one, another championship. So how many championships will that be? Eight? Uh, yeah, that was. Well, you got a lot in the amateur uh, years. Yeah, too. we have a lot in, in motocross, maybe 10 or 11 or 12 or something. <laughs> and, but it's, it's my first in truck racing, so. Uh, uh, wonderful. Yeah. Good first, stuff. maybe of many. Yes. We'll see. Brilliant. Yeah. Awesome Thank you. To you. Thank you, dude. All right, thanks. Legend. Now let's get in car with Ryan. Let's go racing. It was fierce door-to-door -door racing from beginning to end. Bodywork was flying everywhere from all of the contact and there was even action after the finish. But who cares about the damage? As long as you make the podium. At the end of the meeting, fans even took away bits of the cars. And of course, kids love motorbikes. Now it was time to go and meet a friend from Phoenix, who like me had an 800 adventure machine. He would now take me around his backyard for a dual sport adventure. What's up? I'm on your turf now, buddy. Yeah, I'm gonna show you some sweet stuff. I Thank promise. You. Apache Trail. Oh, it's sounds be great. Epic. Just the name sounds great. So with the Apache Trail out plan for tomorrow, we would now head out of the city and ride to a well-known biker bar for some good old grub. Jake's Corner is a fun place that once appeared in a movie and it's full of all kinds of interesting memorabilia. I even found a local lady who was wearing spurs. And there was a British flag on the ceiling. Oh, I love this place. Motorbikes and burgers. Come on. 
After a good feed and a chat about where to pitch our tents, we then went out to check out the live band. Oh, turn the page. But it was definitely time to go when Nick started singing. I remember when I was younger and I walked out on stage. With our bellies full, it was then time to head to the lake and find a place to set up camp. We settled by the water's edge and soon the sparks were flying and the flames going. Now it was time to crack open a beer, relax and enjoy the evening. It had been a great day and ending it under the stars and sleeping next to my Triumph Tiger was the perfect way to end it. The sun sparkled across the lake early the next morning. It was an idyllic start to the day. Soon the kettle was on and as the sun quickly warmed the skies, Nick got some breakfast on the go. But then, Nick's bike wouldn't even start. So some bright spark left his ignition on all night and now we have a flat battery. I, I did not. <laughs> so we found the problem. It was just a loose connection for the battery. So Nick was right, he hadn't really drained it. But anyway, easy fix. And you get to know your bike at these moments as yeah. well. So the most important thing is that you have some tools. Get to know your motorcycle, get a toolkit, and then you can fix any problem. So we got out of Phoenix last night. We came north up towards the Roosevelt Lake. We camped on the lake last night, awesome. But now the sun's up, we're about to hit the trails. Just beyond this awesome bridge is the start of the Apache Trail. We're gonna take that all the way back to Phoenix. I've heard so much about this trail. It sounds epic. Can't wait to take this bike on the trails. So let's get to it. You ready, buddy? Motor G up. So with our bikes ready, bags packed, it was then time to gear up and ride the Apache Trail. From our starting point on the Roosevelt Lake, we would now head back towards Phoenix on this historic trail, ending our day at a ghost town. It was an epic start, a beautiful bridge crossing with amazing views either side. Then we would turn off the main road and take the scenic way back, going in search of where the pavement ends and the fun really starts. Now on the dirt, it was time to turn off that traction control and ABS, get up on those pegs and enjoy our bikes. As the big spoked wheels and long suspension of the Tiger soaked up all of the bumps, we rode straight into breathtaking scenery. Wow, this trail looks amazing.
the Apache Trail was deserted and you could see for miles around. What a great start. It was loads of fun just clicking by those miles as we kicked up the dust and enjoyed the ride. So here on the Apache Trail, amazing. What a great start. Nick, no joke, he said I was in for a treat, but dude, I can't believe it. This is incredible. It's so awesome. So we came across the Roosevelt Dam yeah. and it immediately turns into dirt. Yeah. And you get to drive this Apache Trail right along Apache Lake. So we'll be going all the way up through those hills. We'll go away from the reservoirs for a while and then we'll yeah. come back towards Apache Lake and past Canyon Lake. Wow. And this could take you two days yeah. because around every corner, it's just stunning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this, guys. The Apache Trail just goes all the way off there into the distance. If you want to go trail riding, this is epic. We're on 800cc adventure bikes, and they are brilliant, aren't they? I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the suspension's great. great, tire size is great. It's a big wide road, but it's a lot of yeah. washboard stuff, yeah. so it's nice to have those nice tall tires to just roll over and smooth it exactly, out. Exactly, yeah. Chattering. And also, you know, the, the road surface is like, you know, there's some soft pieces, there's some sandy washers. You know, some hard pack stuff, so, you know, good and you can And you can dial it up as much as you want because there are spur trails that run up into these hills. Yeah, yeah. And you can just go, you know, goat riding if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hot. We've got a sweat on, so we're going to get back on these bikes, get some fresh air, and head down this amazing trail. Back on our machines, we just enjoyed riding this trail as it meandered through the desert hills. But with the sun high in the sky and blazing down on our backs, the Apache Trail really began to heat up. Oh boy, it was getting hot, and riding by this lake is rather tempting. So Nick took one of his spurt trails he'd mentioned earlier, so now we had the chance to cool off. Sweet, this is perfect spot. This man knows all the secrets of staying cool in the desert. It's a little quilted vest, you let yeah. it soak up some water. Yeah. And it acts like it, this is. And you just put that over your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do you not get soaking then? You do, but you know, as it evaporates, it's yeah. like air conditioning, it just cools you. Yeah. And any little bit helps out here. I mean, it's it's the middle of October and it's still pushing 90 something degrees. Yeah, yeah. Too. So, how do you go on in the summer then? Like, if winter you get up time, early, right? you know, if you get up early, five, six o'clock, and, and get out and go up in elevation, yeah. then, you know, hour and a half, two hours away, you can, you can ride all summer yeah, long. Yeah, yeah. What a trail, there's hardly anything on the trail. There's a few bikes, there's loads of room to get two-way traffic through. Awesome, nobody's out here. This deserted trail took us deep into the canyon and further away from civilization. The sheer scale of this place made you feel really small. This trail is fantastic and when we saw some wildlife up on a rocky ledge, it made it even more special. The landscape around here reminds me a lot of Baja, Mexico. It's rugged, dry, and a place where you can quickly feel like you're the only ones around. Just the type of plants that survive out here tell you how brutal this place really is. However, the bikes were handling this trail with ease, and the Tiger was great fun to ride.
and when we finally did come across some traffic, it was thankfully heading the opposite way, <laughs> including the sheriff. The trail is now leading us towards a superstitious mountain range and to an old stagecoach town. It's an historic old place that's nestled deep in these hills. As the sun begins to drop and it begins to cool off a bit, we reach the end of the trail. Nice one, Nick. You promised me a fun ride and the Apache Trail didn't disappoint. It's a fun trail with spectacular views that quickly takes you away from civilization and into freedom. A short ride down this twisty road and with our bellies rumbling, we would now ride to an old saloon and get some refreshments. Oh yes, good food and interesting decor. Wow, look at all these dollar bills stuck to the walls. I've been all day in the saddle, so now we're at the bar, yeah. still sat on the saddle. Another burger, come on. That's good. Ride all day, burger, perfect. Happy day. Do people think that's all you eat? <laughs> they pretty much do. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, our bellies were full, and having enjoyed a brilliant day on the Apache Trail, we just enjoyed the road as the sun set from the sky. The Triumph Tiger had taken me on a great adventure. What a brilliant machine. And cheers, Nick, for a fun ride in Phoenix. It had been a blast. I'm going to actually get in there and use the real one. <laughs> yeah. Take care.